Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, the Fen Treasure. And it's Friday Fen Mail, but I gotta tell you, we're gonna do something a little different today. Mixing it up. We have what we believe to be a somewhat valid solve to the poem, the treasure. And we're going to share that with you coming up in just a couple of moments. Just a few things we wanted to get to first. Uh, number one, I don't believe that we are going to be able to go live on Sunday morning. Ronnie and I were just doing a test, and uh, it looks like we're going to need a little technical help. Uh, <laughs> a little, maybe a little more than a little. <laughs> yeah, we're two 60-year-old cranky, grumpy old guys who are tech-friendly but not savvy. We need a stupid millennial in here to we do. work on this. And how are we going to get that done? <laughs> Oh, I know. We need an engineer. Your son. Oh. I bet he could figure I it bet, out. I bet maybe. I bet he'd be willing to do it too. All right, so before we get to that, wanted to let you know that I've been in correspondence with Mr. Finn. And uh, the reason for that is because, as you know, Mr. Finn is a, a fan of the show. He encourages us to send him episodes, links to episodes uh, every week, really, is what he wants. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to inundate him with stuff or uh, make him feel uh, like he has to watch. Right. You know? So uh, from time to time, Ronnie and I write a blog and uh, we, we both are overdue for one. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in one of our last shows or maybe it was even on the flip side, we'll get to that too, uh, that um, I sent a message to Mr. Fenn um, about my blog. And if you'd like to read my blog, I can tell you that you can find it on our website. That's where our blogs will be from now on. We were using another source. We don't need to do that. We can do it directly to our website, and that's what we plan. Um, I can also tell you that I have the correspondence with Mr. Fenn. Just give me one moment. Here it is. I sent him a message. Oh, gosh, you know, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. Yeah. I don't think he would. He's not going to watch this episode anyway. Uh, probably not. No, so you know what? Believe me, people are sending our shows to him That's for true. Us. That's happening too. Yeah. Mr. Finn, I would really love it if you would read my latest blog. If you have time in your busy schedule, I'd love to hear what you think of my words. Your friend, Lou Gallagher. I sent that off yesterday morning. And it was at about 6.44. I was up really early. Yeah. At 6.44. You're on vacation, I dude. know, I know. Sure. Maybe maybe tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I sent it off to him at 6.44, and not even an hour later, he got back to me. I think this is so cool, Ronnie. If I, You know, so many people go, he doesn't reply to my email. Right. With me, if I send him something, he reads it, and he gets back, and I feel pretty special for that. Lou, comma. I agree with you about family and the dreaded C. I don't even want to say the word. I understand, Forrest. I do. If you don't have your health, he goes on to say, you don't have anything. Money laughs a taunting melody when you're sick. Hmm. Pretty special, huh? Yeah. If, you're, if only to remind you what's important when it comes down to a showdown. I like the way you write and more importantly, the way you think. Hmm. And uh, he signs it F. <laughs> Lowercase F. We already covered that. Uh, so if you'd like to read the blog, I'd love to have you do it. Go to our website, which is very simply uh, menaresosmart.com. Now today, uh, or was there something you wanted to get to? No. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to bring you a solve that we see some things in. And... By no stretch of the imagination are we saying this is the solve. No, okay, we're not so endorsing please. it. No. We're passing it on. Exactly. This we're... person said, gave it to us and said, forward it to the masses. Yes. And so uh, we've been given the permission to do that. And uh, we're going to do that. But before we get to the nine clues, Ronnie and I want to show you some of the research that this person has done. His name is Chris. Chris K is who we'll call him. Okay, I don't know if he wants more yeah, than that's that probably, or not. That's probably sufficient. I didn't ask him. Yeah. All right, so first up, this picture right here, this is a picture of the rock 
from the book that says X marks the spot. And you can clearly see that there is an X going through that. Next photo we're going to show here. This is what Chris believes to be the blaze. And I really am wondering if some of you who um, are searchers have seen this, or is this your blaze? Ronnie, as you can see, that's pretty prominent. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure, but that looks like almost a, like a fallen tree, but I bet it's a rock. I bet it's a rock. Um, but, you know, this is the blaze, and I suppose to some degree that might even be a blaze. Not sure, but isn't that a beautiful picture? That is a very nice picture. I'll tell you, if you're wanting to get out into the out of doors and experience oh. that. Which is what Forrest wanted when he hid this treasure anyway. Okay, and so there's more of the blaze right there. You mm -hmm. can see a waterfall. Um, but over here towards the right, uh, there, where it looks like a blackish area, we'll right. get to what that is coming up yep. in the clues, okay? Here's another picture for you of the blaze. Okay. There's an even different angle on it. Um, okay, so now this is photo... Oh no, where's the numbers? Um, great, that's going to be trouble. Okay. The bottom of the waterfall, which is found in the book on page 80 and page 90. All right, so you can find that and check it out. You can see that down here there seems to be a little bit more black where it almost looks like it was a tar waterfall, huh? Something. There's some more of the black tar, what appears to be black tar. Uh, next photo here. All right, now this particular rock formation that you see in the book, Ronnie, what does Forrest say about his brother Skippy? Uh, buried standing up. Yes, this is what we believe, or I should say Chris believes to be um, representing Forrest's brother, Skippy, being buried straight up. And there's a close-up shot of that rock formation right there. Very, almost, has, almost has like a little face on it there, doesn't it? Almost it almost has an F on it too, doesn't it? It kind of, almost, yeah. Or, or is that an E? I guess you could look at any picture in in your mind imagine anything you want but it well that's what I do when I look at your picture <laughs> all right more of the blaze and down at the bottom you got to imagine that um, at some point based on the erosion of the rock structures there there was water that flowed over that at one time yeah. during the earth's existence at some point I'd have to think so okay so this is the equipment that Chris brought along with him uh, the tools of the trade for the Forest Fen treasure, he says. And you can see there is the Thrill of the Chase book right on top, along with a backpack, whatever else he might need in there. And I think later on we'll be able to show you a picture of the shovel that he was using. I was corrected when I said that he, Chris, had been digging for six hours. I was incorrect. I, I misspoke when I said that. He was in the area for six hours. He was digging for only about 45 minutes or so, and he had a very small garden shovel. Okay. Next up, uh, that would be, this he believes to be, the beach, Tea with Olga, found on page 115, and you can see there's a lot of different colors in those rocks right there. Um, and he calls this Tea with Olga, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that because of the color of the teas that Forrest mentions the, in the, the book. different teas, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is at the bottom, and this is almost precisely where Chris believes the treasure to be. Uh, you can see his uh, his stuff right there, the book, and he's getting ready to go in there. Now, what does that look like to you, Ronnie? That's very reminiscent of the picture in the book where he's standing with his foot on a tree stump. Exactly. Yeah. And note, as we're moving along here, kind of quickly, I understand, but we want to get to the nine clues, and we will. But I just want to share with you how much uh, effort he's put into this all. Put a lot of thought into it. So keep in, keep in reminding yourself that that shape is the, the tree stump that Forrest has his foot up on. 
Next picture, there's another one. Now, this particular area right here is where Chris believes Forrest wanted to leave his remains. And I don't know about you, but if I was going to spend one place for the rest of my life, post-life. You could do a lot worse. Yeah, you could. That is just a beautiful picture right there. And you can see in the shade that tree stump. Yep. So it's right in the area where Forrest would want to leave his remains. There again, the tree stump. Just give you another chance to look at that for a few seconds. Okay, so Ronnie, now we're getting into the area where Chris is beginning to look for the treasure. Um, we've talked in so many other episodes about crevices. Right. Uh, is the treasure buried? Is the treasure wet? Well, I gotta believe in a crevice that size right there, if it rains... It's gonna be wet. I'd have to think so. Yeah. All right? It's going right down that hole. So, still, I believe to this point this is a legitimate attempt at a solve. Now, this one is fascinating. I almost wish I could show this in reverse, because if you look at that very closely, what Chris calls this is the number 23 backwards. And you'll remember that block 23 is found on page 147 of the book. Okay? So now let's look under rock 23. Whoa. Mm. Now, doesn't that look like an area where a treasure might... I mean, you certainly wouldn't stumble upon that. No. Nobody's going to be out just wandering around. You're going to have to, you know, take a leak somewhere and going to go, ah, I wonder if there's treasure down there. Yeah. You never know what animals you might encounter here, too. It looks like a pretty decent rattlesnake uh, den, too. <laughs> Next photo, same spot, just different angle. I mean, that really looks like a potential spot for a treasure chest to me. I ain't no pirate, but if I were burying some booty... <laughs> <laughs> and I've known to bury some booty. <laughs> More. These are all under block 23, page 147. All right, so now this is what he refers to as the palm tree rock. Remember in the book that, like a little mini island with the palm trees and the grass growing uh, towards the west? Um, this is he what he believes to be that and he calls it flat or I'm sorry palm tree rock with the gloves on top flat long leaf book sitting on page 99 so let's go to the next one Ronald okay so same thing this is page 99 he says um, another one Now this is what he calls the palm tree rock, which is a formation in that picture that's in the book, uh, the doodle, if you will. Okay, you gotta have to, you know, maybe you should be watching this show with the book. It might be helpful. All right, so now, this is an area, as you can see, there is that tree stump shape, if you will, again. Right. And that beautiful gaze, and he says, moving rock to look under at tree stump on page 99 is what he refers to. This picture I've showed you already, what he imagines Forrest's view for the afterlife to be. Oh, what did I tell you? Oh. There you go. Little. A mountain goat, right? Yeah. If I'm not wrong. Looks, looks like it. Yeah. So he encountered that. He says... Um, then he killed it and ate it. Had a mountain goat show up while I was resting on block number 23. So maybe this damn goat knows where the treasure is. Could be. You know, maybe we ought to interrogate. <laughs> no, we tried that once with Bigfoot. That didn't it work It did out. not work. No. Speaking no. of which, did you notice that right there? Yeah, saw just that. Now? Okay. Yep, just did. All right, so this is a petroglyph on the way to the parking lot at Spanish Cross... And he says he found this in the scrapbook that you all talk about. Now, 
Forrest said he draw, drove a sedan to this location. But from what we've showed you at this point, there's no place to park car here. No. No. So this next slide shows you where he believes Forrest parked the car. And uh, the next one that I'm going to show you, in the book he'll remember, I keep saying that, huh? In the book. In the book he'll remember, he talks about the sign that his dad put outside his office at the school where he was the principal. And um, the, I should say Chris believes that this is representative of that. Okay? Okay. Let's get a little closer look at it. There you have it. Uh -huh. Uh, imagine that saying, Mr. Fenn, and um, the wooden sign that saved the parking spot for him when he went into work at school. Okay, so, now, um, we need to get to, let's see, what number is that? Whoa, there we go. All right, uh, this is a view from, um, as you can see, there's a picture of Chris right there, or his companion we really can't see the face but uh, this I believe is the Rio right there running through okay. there all right um, now I, I think he says you don't have to cross a river this particular slide is called the Alpha Rock and I believe that is very close to the Greek letter A for Alpha Next up, another tree stump shape that Chris has encountered. And Ronnie, you're right. There probably are many of these rocks, but is it just a coincidence? Or is it some sort of a sign that you're going in the right direction? Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, you remember in the book, Forrest talks about um, his instrument panel on his plane yep. and the blinking light well, he believes that that particular, where that arrow and that white spot are, that's what uh, Forrest is referring to. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to show a couple more here. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, there's Skippy's Rock again. Right. Uh, you heard him mention burning candles at both ends, and Chris believes that's the candle right there in the middle, and those areas, we'll call them, are uh, burning candles at both ends. All right. This is exactly where Chris believed the treasure to be. And the uh, map information is 36 degrees, 20 feet, 13 inches north, 105 degrees, 43 feet, 26 inches west. So if you're on Google Earth right now and you want to know exactly where this solve is, you can follow those coordinates. Okay? All right. There's a little bit more. Um, there is the waterfall or what, what's left of what used to be the waterfall. Um, this is pretty much the shape of the rock again. Yep. He calls that eye calving. Um, now this is the farmhouse that's in the book uh, I know it's a small picture but you can see right next to that road is a small farmhouse and I'll show you that picture um, from the book once again another area real close to where he was Man, he took a lot of pictures. Yeah, he did. Just, um, there's another beautiful area. I think that's called Flat Leaf Rock right there. Now, in this picture, you can see the shovel I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, right? Not much of a shovel. No. And so it's not like he's, you know, digging huge holes like you do at the beach. Right. Right. So he's kind of just moving a little rock around. Yep. In the, I would say, almost unlikely event that it may have been covered, or it could be such that this is just natural erosion and dirt and dust and everything right. else that takes place. After 10 years. Yeah. You know, again, 
he he said that it it wasn't buried. Right. But if it's still there, I gotta imagine it's com- covered to some degree. Yep. All right, this is uh, his search area right here. Uh, you can see the slide trail, lower trailhead. That's marked there with that green spot. And he shows five different levels of his solve here. And he believes right there where that line is, that's where his treasure spot is. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Ronnie. Let's get to the solve. Okay, give me a second to reset here. And um, let's see, where is that going to be? Oh, I know, in files. All right, Ronnie. So um, let me get to this. Now, the first, begin it where warm waters halt. The first thing... Uh, do, you, do you have that up? I do. Why don't you take it, okay? Uh, it says, begin it where warm waters halt, which is John Dunn Bridge, uh, Rio Grande, and Rio Hondo. It's a big W on the west side of the Rio Grande. All right, stop right there. I'm going to show this picture here, I think. If it'll open. Notice the W on the ground there, and it's really integral to this solve because... In the next picture, I'm going to show you where his warm water halts. See the W? Oh, uh, yes, distinctly. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's the Arroyo Hondo. And uh, his warm water halt solution is Black Rock Hot Springs. So that's his warm water halt. What's next, Ronnie? Okay. Take it to the canyon down. Okay, here comes the canyon down. Uh, put in boat launch below the home of Brown, House of Mud, AK Rio Taos. Now, I want to try to show you that go a little bit further down, Ronnie. Can you go down? Or you know what? Maybe this is it. Okay. <laughs> Um, my first day of researching, uh, he, I, he said he found where the chest was. A few days later, he was in New Mexico, but it wasn't all a waste of time. He befriended a camp host that told him of the Taos Rio nickname, which is, what is it, Ronnie? Mudhouse. Mudhouse. And uh, we did a little research for you, because that's kind of what we do. And I can tell you that uh, when a gentleman by the name of Coronado arrived on the scene in this area, all Taos Pueblo walls were constructed using balls of adobe, clay, about the size of a softball. Coronado introduced the technique of the formed mud brick, thus the nickname Mud House, thus home of Brown. Take it, Ronnie. Uh, let's see. Muddy waters. Uh, Back to number th- three clue. Put well, him below. We did three, that. Yeah, put him below the boat launch okay. house. We also did for the Homer Brown, Rio Taos, the House of Mud. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Five. There'll be no paddle up your creek because uh, Forrest is driving 415 yards from the corner of the dirt road to the beginning of Aurelia Verde the slide trail where there is a wooden sign and parking. Okay, so we showed you that before. Uh, Next up, we want to talk about um, heavy loads and waters high, correct? Yes. Okay, take it. Uh, From the wooden sign, walk up the trail roughly 130 yards, cut up to the right, stay close to the water runoff about 40 yards, then go left to avoid the overgrowth From there, make your way up through and over big rocks, heavy loads. Uh, Go 315 yards, and the corner is a very small waterfall, more of a runoff for rain, water high. Now at the bottom of this waterfall is a rock. Uh, We showed you that. Hand or foot pointing to the east. Mm -hmm. So in this picture, Ronnie, here is what he's talking about. 
that is either a hand or a foot and it's pointing in an eastward direction and that is so close as you can see right here to his search area right in that area where we said would be a perfect spot for a treasure okay i'm ready okay next it says uh if you've been wise and found the blaze okay at this rock turn around and look at the rock face to the north northeast the rock face changes colors at the very end of the right side. This is the blaze. Okay, so he's being very specific there. Uh, as well as there's the double omega. You can, and we looked at it, uh, you can see. Well, you were saying that you thought that for the most part, you could see a double omega in just about any formation of rocks. I mean, if you, if you tell your mind there's a double omega there, you'll see it. Yeah. Uh, but he he has highlighted it in a picture that he Showing sent you. Showing you that right here. And um, then when you look at the naked picture without the highlighting, mm -hmm. you can see it. And it is, it's kind of, it is odd because it there's the flat section of the omega where it, then where it arches up and then you can see another flat. So I, I kind of get it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to shoot that one down completely. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up is Clue 8, but Terry Scant with Marvel Gaze. Okay, so we're going to show you a couple of pictures right here. Uh, Terry Scant, not only is she a great personality on that show, <laughs> by Hippie's Lips, but uh, she's also what's left of what once was a waterfall. Waterfall, apparently, mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe... That is uh, referenced in the book in the war chapter. Correct. Uh, that area where he went and... He kept flying over he and... He said he had to go there. Yep, had to examine it. And that is your Terry Scant right there. Yep. Uh, let's see. This is the top of the waterfall, the water runoff. Mm -hmm. uh, then walk along the wall face to the blaze about 130 yards. Okay. Uh, the next clue, if you're brave and in the wood this is the rock shaped as the tree stumps uh on page 146 uh -huh. forest is leaning on with the axe uh, stop at this point take your time to look around the tree stump is mirrored on its side if you look at the rock face you will see little white specks all over the wall that's the stars right in the uh, pictures the house, yeah, yeah on 41 page 41 the 43 moon. 69, 71, and 146. Uh, look up to the top of the wall. To the left, you'll see the shape of a crescent moon cut off at the cliff. Uh, you will also find a rock shape of the leaves on the palm tree on the ground next to the tree stump. Uh, I'm sorry, tree stump rock. And if you really pay attention, you will see the rocks on your walk to the blaze in the colors of tea with Olga, which we've shown before. If you really paid attention, then you will realize that you are now standing on row four next to block 23 from page 147. Wow, that says a lot right there. Uh, look at the rock face next to the tree stump. It has a 23 backwards on the front of the rock. Uh, now this is my solve, but it goes much deeper than this. Uh, Everything I have pointed out in my solve has been there longer than Forrest Fenn's clues, and they will keep being there for many, many years to come. Uh, P.S. Why does Forrest keep uh, repeating the number 50? From the blaze, it's 50 miles to Santa Fe. There you go. Uh, wow. You know, and so let me read this finally in closing. Uh, Chris says, I started my search... April 18th of 2019. Chris goes on to say, how does Forrest know someone was within 200 feet? He says he doesn't know, but he does know of one group of people that was actually around 200 feet of the treasure. Forrest also has seen this group, a man and a woman with their film crew. Expedition Unknown is the name of the show. Josh Gates and Kate Yaluche. Expedition Unknown season two, episode seven, he says Katya and Josh were at an elevation of 6,200 feet roughly and went up to about 6,350 feet in their search. 
Chris says, I believe the chest is around 6,550 feet in this area. 500 foot searchers are about 6,200 feet at the slide trail. This is why he keeps saying, there's one thing that nobody has thought about. If they would have thought about it, they might have found the treasure by now. Hmm. Once again, if you'd like to check that out after our show, not now. Uh, Expedition Unknown, Season 2, <laughs> Season 2, Episode 7, aired November 18, 2015. Okay, Ronnie, he goes on to say, um, My first actual day researching was April 25th. After six hours, I found out where the chest was. A few days later, I was in New Mexico, but I was wrong. Uh, but it wasn't all a waste of time. I befriended a camp host that told me of the Taos Rio nickname, House of Mud. He also pointed me to the fjord. It was a place to start, and oh boy, was it a good place. And was that the 32 fjord? I think it was a 35 <laughs> fjord. <laughs> Had the big six in it. All the old guys that watch our show are going, I know what that is. All right, so Chris regrets that he is unable to complete his search for very personal reasons, which are finance and his family and the effect. And, you know, we hear that a lot. Yep. And so he is certain, he, he even had a false alarm. He told me, go ahead and do it. The next day he got back to me, he goes, no, don't do it. And then the next day he goes, oh, okay, do it. Yep. And so here we are doing it for you now. That is the solve. He believes it's in New Mexico. We've laid out some beautiful pictures for you. I, I can't say that Ronnie and I agree or disagree. When we were on the flip side the other night, which is actually called, um, what is the new name for it? Flip the, flip the script. script. Uh, we talked about how many solves we get and um, how much flack we've taken in the past for putting them up there. Right. Let me assure you this, okay? We care as much as you do about this treasure. We're so deep. We're, we're up, way up above our waist in water when it comes to treasure. Uh, just short of going and looking ourselves. Correct. Which, Ronnie, we just are never going to do. We're not going to do that. Okay. So what we're saying is this. Um, that's kind of what we do on our show here. We bring you some what we believe to be forward-thinking solutions. They may or may not be the exact solution. When Sean brought up the other night that Forrest Fenn himself, we've talked about this, if he were to send us a uh, solve... People would shoot it down. They would. They would yeah. pick, a, pick it apart. Yeah, people would shoot Every it down. Every single one of them. Yep. And so, uh, in so doing, what we hope is that we might give you a fresh set of eyes to look at the treasure. Maybe something we've said today will spark something in you and bring you closer to being the person that solves this treasure. Somebody asked me the other day, do you think Forrest wants this treasure to be found? Where do you stand on that, Ronnie? Definitely does. Uh, in his lifetime. In his lifetime, I think, is, is his best you know his greatest expectation but we were t and we were talking about this i don't think it was on the show but we were talking about this that hey in a hundred years this whole buzz may kind of fall off and you know people that are looking for it now are going to be long gone and hey, it could all just be gone away but once the treasure if you just have a couple of people out there still looking and i think as time goes on more and more people are going to get together, put their clues together, and come up with a, a good solve. And then the treasure's found. Guess whose name is right back on top in the news? True. Not my feeling. Um, I can't say that I know Mr. Fenn real well. But I get the feeling that he would like this to continue beyond his, his life. Now, he's almost 90 years old. He's going to be 90 on his next birthday. Uh, how long does he have left? You know, we hope he lives to be 190. Right. Uh, honestly, yep. he's that great a man, and we would miss him that much if he were gone. But somehow, 
And you know, even in my in my blog that I just wrote, I talked about legacy. What is your legacy? What is Forrest's legacy? Well, it's vast. Um, he's done it all. He, he flew over 350 bomber missions in 365 days during the Vietnam War. And you can't quote me on those exact numbers, but you get my point. Almost every day for a year. He's been in the fray. So he's an accomplished man. Mm -hmm. And he wants to, I believe, leave something behind that tells people, you know what? Hey, I was here and I did my very best to make a difference. And I did my very best to get people out of doors and away from these things we call video screens and uh, get them out in the fresh air. And I think he wants that to continue. It hasn't been found in 10 years. Do you think it'll be found in 10 more? And if so, would Forrest be alive? Yeah. And if he were alive, would he even care anymore? Right. So I don't think it'll be found before Forrest passes, and God knows I don't want that to happen anytime soon, right? Yep. Any other feelings? Uh, no. I mean, that's, uh, I think that sums it up pretty well. All right. Well, I hope that you've taken something from this. We encourage you to check out our website. It's menaresosmart.com. If you've made it this far in the episode, why not subscribe to our channel? It doesn't cost a dang dime. And it means a lot to both of us. We're trying to raise that number. Uh, we are also still trying to raise money through our PayPal account, Ronnie. Yep. And we still have a few donations that are still rolling in. Yep. Gosh, we need to get to about $1,500, and we're going to need a couple of donations that are around. Uh, oh, not that $25 isn't a great donation. It is. Greatly appreciated. But we need to skyrocket this because we're not going to do this forever, our PayPal account. Yep. So if you can make a donation of, say, 100 or 150 or even more dollars, uh, that would get us to Santa Fe, New Mexico much quicker so that we can spend some time with Mr. Fenn and bring you back all the things that we learn. I was thinking about this, Ronnie. You know, I, I just mentioned that Forrest Fenn and I communicate from time to time. Do you know in our communication, we have never once talked about the treasure? Not even once. I would think that that's a big bonus for him. Uh-huh. You know, the last thing I want to do is, hey, on page 65, you said this. I'm not going to do that to him. All right. That's the last thing he wants. And that's probably why he communicates with me, because I don't do that. Right. And I know another thing that really irks him is when people send him a solve, he doesn't really comment on them. No. He might give something away if you're, he did. You're, you're, you're kind of running up the wrong tree. That's just, he doesn't care. He, good luck. You know? Yeah, send them to us if you wish. If yeah. you want somebody to see them. Force isn't going to tell you, yes, your solve is 100% correct. But you got to have all of your clues lined up yeah. in your solve. Yeah, if you send us something with four or five of the clues, these I'm, this is what these mean, and the other ones I'm not sure, <laughs> we're, we can't do that. I don't have that kind of time, people. Right. Sorry. I do have a life. <laughs> How about that big? Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, you can email us at any time. You've seen the email addresses going across the screen. Uh, we are on Facebook at Men Are So Smart. And uh, we do appreciate your watching this show. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. How about we say, oh, 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 before we say that, um, the chances are very good that we will not be doing a live broadcast on Sunday. And the chances are very good that we may not have a Sunday morning mass. Check back. We'll let you know. Yep. If I find out something different, I'll try to get it on this show uh, in, in some version of editing that I will do so that you'll know. Okay? All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. See you next time. I'm better so smart. Bye-bye. Hi, Forrest.